Welcome to the Innovative Leader Podcast, featuring Christy Geiger, Executive Coach with Synergy Strategies, and David Phillips, Professor, Consultant, and Coach. Hey folks, hope you're doing well. This is David and Christy back with another episode of the Innovative Leader. And today we're going to talk about something that uh, is probably um, all over the place in our country, probably all over the place in your life, and that is stress. Um, it is all over the place in my life. Um, we we have not had a call, Christy, in a couple of weeks because of the stress uh, that my job brings. This is back to school season for me, and this is uh, it's a very stressful time. So, um, uh, and Christy's had a lot of conversations with people in her coaching calls about stress. Um, especially this week. And so we thought this would be a great time to kind of jump on that and talk a little bit about it so that we can um, maybe help you um, with some things so that um, maybe stress won't take you down. So, uh, so um, Christy, let's talk uh, about stress. Let's um, stress is physically debilitating in, in some cases, uh, right? I mean, that's, that's one of the reasons that we need to talk about it um, a lot. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> I would say some of the symptoms that show up when, I think sometimes as leaders, we actually get used to running with a low level of stress all the time. So we either one, we get used to, oh, I'm stressed. Well, you know, we're, so we kind of over identify with it, but we don't think much of it or we don't actually recognize it because we're used to running at that rhythm often. Uh, most leaders who I know are not doing one thing. They're involved in numerous things. They're on boards and nonprofits and uh, running their company and working with their teams and very active with their families. And their families are high achieving, their kids are high achieving. So there's a lot of push and drive yeah. in leaders' lives. And so the really what we're talking about today is this tipping point of stress where there's kind of like a healthy stress, uh, if we can call it that, I, I'm sure some wellness people would squash me for that, but um, I'm gonna say there's like a healthy stress that we are able to kind of be, you know, our car is running, the engine's going, and you know, we're giving it a solid workout, but we're okay. And then there's the stress where your engine is about to overheat, your car is smoking, and you're like, yikes, do I keep driving? Do I pull over? Oh my gosh, I don't have time to stop. So we're talking about that stress that kind of puts you on the edge of, um, and it's not even necessarily what I would say right now is burnout, but it's just, we get overwhelmed. Yep. Um, we are unable to think clearly. We are unable to make strong decisions. Things feel more complex and more confusing than they typically are because we're stressed. And so our mind has shifted into our favorite limbic mode and we're a little bit more in that posture rather than our frontal lobe where we have access to greater ability to think through complex problems. Right. And we lose that a little bit. And as leaders, it's critical that we keep our ability to think through complex problems. Because when we're up here and we're thinking through complex problems, we're able to lead forward. When we be, the more we get into this spinning stress cycle, uh, the more we become ineffective as leaders. Yeah, and, and I would even go so, far, go so far as to say that that stress can have a psychophysiological effect, and I know that's a, a, a big term, but essentially it is the, the fact that um, it, will, it will affect how, your body uh, in a very negative way. Um, I, know, uh, I know I texted you a couple weeks ago and said, look, hey, I, I I just can't. I was I was physically sick at my stomach uh, just because of the the amount of hours I was having to work and the decisions we were having to make and the and the pace at which we were working and uh, and I know we've talked a lot about stress and about taking care of yourself and I, and I, oddly enough I was doing those things uh, which makes it even worse. I was I was taking a walk at lunch. I was eating a salad. Uh, I wasn't you know eating uh, living off fast food. I wasn't drinking down cokes and things like that. Um, it, so, so as much as we have talked about it in, in the short history of our podcast, um, you know, I was trying to do those things and it still, uh, was affecting me and, and it affects, uh, it affects your ability to even go to sleep sometimes, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. 
and so mentally. And it also affects your body. You know, cortisol is actually released in times of stress, um, which um, can, if, if it's constant, it can actually put you in a situation where um, you go into, um, uh, it affects your insulin, your ability to process insulin and those kinds of things. So, um, so it, and not, it, it has a very physiological effect on your life. And so as we um, think about stress, um, we want to um, um, kind of talk about a couple of things here. We want to talk about um, taking care of yourself and building margin. We want to talk about having compassion um, and, and not placing more demands on your team. Uh, that's, that's huge. And then just how to recalibrate and get sucked in uh, versus getting sucked into to a reaction. Um, and so let's talk about the self piece first. And, and um, because it's very real to me, um, let me just tell you a couple of things that I did that really helped uh, me kind of back off that stress. And then you, you know, you can, you can talk about some things as well. So one of the things that, that I literally had to start doing, um, uh, I took a Tylenol PM every night just to make sure I could go to sleep. I know that's, uh, may not be the healthiest thing in the world, but I, I was taking magnesium, which uh, Dr. Amen recommends. I, I took some melatonin, um, but just to make sure I slept all night, I did take a Tylenol PM because that's, um, I don't necessarily recommend that for everybody. Everybody's body is different. You need to do what is uh, right for you, but sometimes we actually do need that help to sleep. And um, I took, um, it took two weekends of sleeping late and going to bed at eight o'clock uh, just, just for my body to kind of catch up on that. Your body's need for rest is, is immense. Um, and so uh, things like taking care of uh, getting a good night's rest is huge. Um, the other thing is, um, uh, so, so my job involves a lot of sitting, a lot of standing, um, not a lot of activity. There are days when I wish I could work in the lawn industry and go mow yards and work in the yard, you know, uh, for a living. And I could, but, but it doesn't necessarily pay quite as well. Um, but, uh, but, but you, physically, being physically active uh, was a huge thing for me. Just, just getting outside and working and using my body and using the muscles so that I didn't feel like a a, a giant blob, to be honest. Um, so those were kind of the two big things, a lot of water, um, not, not a lot of junk food, uh, didn't eat junk food, didn't drink Cokes. You know, a lot of us get in the, the coffee Coke cycle when we get stressed because we're start, trying to stay awake. We're trying to, to do all these things. And um, so I, I didn't go that route, didn't go into the candy thing where you didn't, where you're, you're trying to get that sugar to, to be able to handle everything. It was literally um, just using my body and getting, giving my body rest and then uh, taking those, those two days to not think about work. Um, because, because when you're in a very stressful situation, especially in a business and, and in some cases you have very time sensitive issues that have to, to be there, you can work yourself in distress Mm -hmm. and, Absolutely. and you, you can, um, you can try to respond immediately instead of trying to respond appropriately. And so you have to give that time, get that time away. And, um, even just taking a, if you can afford it, go to a hotel, sp spend the night with your, your spouse, uh, or just by yourself in some cases and just get that rest that you need. Um, so those are the kind of the two bigs for me. Um, your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think those are, are really good. And I would agree with all of those. Um, one, I guess, first is just a little bit, and we'll talk about compassion for others more in the next one, but compassion and understanding for yourself, I think is important. Yeah. Sometimes we have to kind of look around and understand what's going on. And I think as leaders, sometimes we can feel a little bit defensive. If you're an achieving leader, if you're a high performing leader, it's not that it's embarrassing, but 
we can just feel a little defensive or apologetic when we are not on our game the way that we usually are or the way that we want to be. Yep. And so it can be hard to acknowledge that. And so to me, there is sometimes looking around and just being like, okay, we are in August. This is a back to school season. Plus we're still in COVID. Yep. Um, people are still in a lot of uncertainty. Your team is in a lot of uncertainty as they're trying to adapt to schooling their kids at home or sending their kids to school when they have to wear masks and the kids are having meltdowns about it. The teachers are, you know, sending out more communications or whatever it is, right? Right. There's a lot of volume of information coming out right now. We're in the middle of a political uh, election year, election right. season. There's a lot of information um, and energy and emotion about that happening right now. So when we look environmentally and around us in the world, we have to recognize there's a lot of things that come in and kind of compress us, whether it's the, our social medias that we're looking at, whether yeah. it's the news channels we're looking at, whether it's the people who are, we're having conversations with, um, all these things that we're doing. And plus, typically when, as businesses, when we come into the fall, we're ramping up. We're on the other side of the summer season where people have taken their vacations. Right. Regardless if they did or not, it doesn't matter. We're on the other side of summer. And on the other side of summer, we kind of get back down to business. We reset our fall goals. We're looking at Q3, Q4. What are we going to get done before the end of the year? And we're really trying to get down to business and get traction again. And guess what? We're not quite environmentally, uh, the, the world around us isn't quite ready for that yet because of COVID, because of things that still aren't back to normal so to speak. And so all of those things contribute to additional kind of a, a crunching pressure as leaders try to lead forward, but there's just more variables, more information, more right. confusion and things to sort through. So give yourself some compassion and just understand what's going in on in my world that's making it a little bit more complex or stressful right. and just take a deep breath. So that's one. And then the other thing is just the permission to recharge. And I think, David, you were talking about this earlier with, um, and I know you had posted on Facebook some outdoor work that you had done yeah. and things like that, but just giving ourselves that permission to recharge. Last weekend, usually I've got a nice hefty to-do list of things that I want to do, home projects, family projects. And I just, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, they, all three of them were pool days. Yeah. And my husband, Mike, he's like, what do you want to do this weekend? I'm like, I'm just hanging out in the pool. And he's like, really? I'm like, yep, that's all I'm doing this week which is very uncommon. I did do some laundry, but other than that, that's it because I needed permission to recharge. I needed permission to give my brain a break. Um, you know, some other signs like you just can't listen to another podcast. You just can't listen to another audiobook. You just can't take in more information. You just can't clear out your email box. These are all signs you're at capacity and you need to just back up a little bit and take a break. And it's okay. It, it is okay to do that. Yeah. You know, when you live, um, when you live your life at the red line, um, you, you have no margin, right? Uh, and, and by red line, I'm, I'm thinking engines here, car engines here. When you live your life at that red line, you have no margin. So when something else gets thrown your way, you have no capacity to deal with it and manage it and to do it well. Um, and so we have to back off. We, um, you know, we need to live our life at, at maybe 70% instead of 100%. Um, we need, we, we you know, I, I think about, um, I think about some friends, especially at this time, and they're talking about this book that they're reading and that book that they're reading and this podcast and that. And I'm like, I don't have time for it. And so there are days when I just feel bad because that, you know, I would love to be doing that, but. At the, at the same time, I turn around and go, I just don't have time for that. It is quite okay. Uh -huh. I, can't, I can't do everything. Um, and I think we have to kind of come to that point where we say we can't do everything. We can't listen to this and read this and watch that and take care of it. You have to be, um, you have to be willing to say no. No needs to be one of your favorite words. Uh, especially when times get stressed. Um, um, because 
I, and I think about, I think about uh, uh, Hurricane Laura that just went through um, the Gulf Coast uh, yesterday. And I see these pictures of ambulances and first responders on the interstate heading to, um, to Louisiana and Texas to try to help out because they need it. Um, they, that's what margin looks like. Right. When something bad happens, we have the, the ability and the capacity to kind of handle that emergency. Um, and uh, so we need to we do need to back off. Live at 80 um, percent. Mm-hmm. Don't live at 100. Uh, but give yourself permission to say no. Say no to your uh, your friends, your family. Um, I need some time by myself. I need some time to do this. I need we need that time together, even as a, as a couple those kinds of things. Um, so give yourself some margin. Yeah, that reminds me of a, another conversation I was having this week where we were talking about saying no. Sometimes saying no isn't, I don't really actually like the word no. I like to say yeah, like, yes, I'll do that in a week or whatever is more my approach to the, the no thing, childhood psychological yeah. issue. But <laughs> um, so I was talking with a, a client about what can you say no to this week? So if all your margin got eaten, what can you do to create some margin this week? So is there something that can be delayed this project? Let's not work on that for two weeks. Does this really need to be done right now? Since all of the heat has gotten turned up with these other things, can we turn this other thing down right now and set it aside while you're focusing on this? And once that's figured out, go ahead and bring it back on the plate. So I agree with that saying no and just finding that balance. I think yeah, that so, kind of leads us in. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, let me, so um, there is a, an interesting book. Um, Rory Vaden, I think is his name. He wrote a book yeah. called Procrastinating on Purpose. Uh, and it, and it may be something that, you, you know, we, uh, our listeners might want to check out because he talks about this funnel, um, and thing goes in the funnel. Can it be done now? Can somebody else do it? Uh, you know, there's this whole three or four step process. And if it, um, sometimes it just means to, to be thrown back in the funnel to be done something done at a different time. And, uh, procrastination is a, is a bad term or not a good, not a, we have a negative connotation of that term, but sometimes we do need to pr- procrastinate some of the things that we uh, want to do or feel like we need to do, uh, procrastinate them on purpose uh, and, until there's a better scenario, a better situation to to kind of handle those. Yeah, agreeing. That, that word makes it kind of makes me a little uncomfortable. I'd call <laughs> it strategic design, but... <laughs> yeah, no, I get it. But, uh, I'm just going by his, his words. Permission to procrastinate. What? <laughs> yeah that's good yeah that's a good one i think that book rory is great he's got some really good content there's an older book too that's actually called margin that's really good about how to build margin into your life so either one of those would be great but i think this all tips into the second point which is about this compassion for others versus more demands sometimes as leaders when we are under a lot of pressure it it turns our boiling temperature up And so then we start to um, boil those things in our pot, boil the people around us. So our team, our family, um, our friends, whatever, where we have a harder time having compassion for other people. Um, And instead we're like, okay, wait, when is that getting done? Uh, Pick up the shoes, do this, do that. Where it's a lot harder to have compassion for our team when they're under the exact same stress. So they're juggling, remember those environmental conditions we were thinking about, right? Right. They're under the same environmental conditions. So they're feeling more stress too. So it's not a time to, you know, put on the um, drill for your team. Rather, it's to have compassion on them too and to lighten that load. So even applying that, the last principle that we're talking about, procrastinating on purpose or saying no, what can you delay and take off that plate? So if right now we're in this pinch season, what do we need to take off for one week or two week? What is reasonable in order to get that done, move that forward, do it well, set people up for success so that they don't burn out, but right. set them up for success, have compassion, give them the same permission, what you just did for yourself, turn around and do that for your team. 
Are they sleeping? Are they having time to work out? How is their diet? Bring a case of water into work. Bring yeah. a fruit basket into work. Um, send your team something, a, a fruit basket, whatever it is, have greater compassion to encourage your people to do the same. Right. And as leaders, that's part of what we're doing. We are leading and rippling out to help other people to recognize, oh my goodness, I'm stressed. How am I taking care of myself? What am I saying no to? What am I prioritizing? How am I gonna have margin? And do that for your leaders or for your for your leaders and your people rather than increasing the demands. That's the temptation is to increase the demands right. rather than reflect to the team exactly what we're doing. What thoughts do you have about how to have compassion with your people and with your team in a time of stress? Yeah, so um, our CEO uh, had a call with us uh, a couple weeks ago, last week actually. And one of the things he said was, um, you do not need to work on Sunday. You do not need to respond uh, to those emails over the weekend. You do not need to do. You, and, it, and, and it was, there were several, you do not need to do this. Um, and that, what that did is it gives, it gave us permission to not just to blow everything off, but essentially to say, he's worried about me more than he's worried about as much as he's worried about the bottom line. And um, so I can, I can feel good. I mean, it was a, it's a mental release. I can feel good about not having to check my email over the weekend. I can feel good about taking um, three hours uh, from five to eight uh, and spending time with my family and eating meal with them and decompressing, laughing, playing with my son. I know I'm going to have to go back into work for a few hours, but you know, I can, I don't have to feel bad about that. Um, and so it gives your, it, by doing those things, it gives your team permission um, to not feel like they have to be working all the time. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Um, that, so that's one. And the other thing, so I, I tell my team, um, we've got a, we've got a call a little bit later on today, but typically on Fridays, I, I'll say um, at three o'clock be done shut down and, and, and leave. So, I mean, that's an easy thing you can do for your, for your, um, for your team. If they don't have something to do, give them, um, give them that margin at the end of the week to say, go, just get out of here, have a long weekend, don't think about work. Um, so those are some, some simple things. Um, it doesn't cost money to do that. Uh, it shows compassion um, and your team will love you for doing those kinds of things. Um, so those are, those are a couple things. Um, and then also not only recognize, not only have compassion for your team. Um, one of the things that's kind of been uh, noticeable for me is um, because we are a vendor for a lot of different school districts and because I work directly with them, I'm finding I need to have compassion for, for those folks as well. Um, because they are super stressed. COVID has thrown the educational system in a, a upside down and they're fighting and they're upset and they're compressed and they have all of this stuff to get done um, at, at a certain point and they are stressed out completely. Um, and so um, despite getting yelled at um, by them on some occasions, simply because um, they started too late in the process uh, to do this and to get it done the first day of school, for instance, um, you got to have compassion on them. You got to have compassion on all the stakeholders and not just your team. Um, uh, and if you can help your, your team understand that too, the, then um, maybe it, it kind of makes things a little bit easier down the, down the road um, for everybody. Yeah, I agree with that. I think that's true. Uh, and if we were just practicing those principles of kindness, grace, understanding, because the other thing when we're in stress too, and then someone is really holding you accountable or is snarky or angry, like, hey, you were supposed to have that passcode out. What are you doing? It, it, it does cause even greater, again, defensiveness and right. shaming versus give some grace, give some love, give some understanding um, is exactly. really important it, so that everyone can recover and get back to 
a more balanced place quickly. Yep. So how do we how do we recalibrate um, and, and kind of get back? Because we're all living in stress. How do we how do we let you back off the engine a little bit, back off the RPMs? So to me, that point is kind of about when we are in stress there is a tendency to shift into reaction mode. Yep. And even if we are typically a very organized or scheduled or routine or disciplined uh, type, and just like you were saying earlier with our fitness habits or food habits, I can't tell you how many people are struggling with, like I was doing great with my water, oh my goodness. I was doing great with my workout, oh my goodness, right? So in these times of crunch, those things tend to go out the window a little bit and we need to reset and we need to recalibrate versus just riding the wave of reaction. Reaction leads to more reaction, which leads to more reaction. Reaction does not solve itself. Right. You have to stop, recalibrate and be intentional. So a lot of times right now, what I'm recommending is really to take that weekend for your self care Sunday night, recalibrate, which means sitting down and looking at your week ahead, scheduling, looking at your buckets. What are the major projects and priorities that I have to do and blocking time for that? Yes, at nine o'clock, there's probably going to be someone who needs to talk to you, some fire drill happening, and you have your phone off because you're unavailable for two hours to move that project forward. Because if you don't, the fire drill will not stop. Yep. And so it's really blocking your time, uh, knowing your priorities, and communicating with your team, and helping to get that structure back, putting that structure back into place, even though it will feel like you can't. And that's a lie. And we want to fall into that because it feels like, you know, in the fire drill, it feels like you can't stop to go get water. Well, if you don't, you're going to have a hard time putting that dumpster fire out. Right. So stop and go get water, even though it feels like you can't. What, what do you do to recalibrate? Yeah, so like, I, like you mentioned, the, so the weekend thing is, is big and um, you need to, um, I, I think you need to reset those habits um, those systems, those, those, those things that kind of form and shape you, um, whether it's, you know, 20 minutes in the morning just to, to meditate or 10 minutes to meditate and be quiet or, or whether you have, um, you know, if you're spiritual in that regard, maybe you're, you're, you're praying or, or you know, however you, you handle those things. Um, Take some time to um, to listen to some some calm music, or maybe if your thing is not calm music, then some rat or poison or kiss. You know, whatever you whatever kind of gets you on that on that road and kind of helps you with those things. I, um, so music is 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 kind of a driver for me. So that's that's a big thing um, that I do. Um, but uh, turning off you know turning off your phone. Um, you know, the, what's the old saying, your emergency does not, something about, yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, so help, help people realize that, yeah, this isn't, may not right, be right, it may not be working, um, but that doesn't mean um, we have to throw gas on a fire, that means we, we need to figure out what, um, what's, what's around it so we can, we can deal with the problem. And, and that, that's actually one of the things that um, sometimes I watch uh, and, and, you know, watch some fire stuff, people who fire, I watch stuff about fires and putting out fires and I'm a nerd like that. And I, I have some friends who are firefighters and when, when they get there, they don't just rush into the fire to put it out. Right. They evaluate, evaluate, where everything is, what, what could possibly happen is, is the structure safe for them to go in. Um, they're not going to put their own team at risk. Um, so they do that evaluation. And so, um, so, so in the midst of that stress, sometimes we just need to back up and evaluate what's going on and then start, you know, saying, we just, we, we're going to have to hold off on this. We're going to have to do that. And so, so for me, um, you know, checklists, things that I have to do. So I start itemizing things a little bit just to make sure I get done what has to be done as opposed to reacting to what everybody else is, 
is going, uh, is, is doing or fearing or, you know, because stress, a lot of stress is about fear. Um, and, um, so you have to put people at ease, even in some cases, create some, some certainty and create certainty for yourself, um, as well, uh, by saying, this is what I can do today. Uh, this is what I'm going to get done today and I'm going to do it unless somebody gets shot. <laughs> I mean, sometimes we kind of, we kind of need to go, uh, in some cases to that extreme that this is what needs to be done. It's the best thing to do, not what has to be done. It's what's the best thing to do. Yeah, sure. It goes back to the Stephen Covey, um, urgent versus, important and a lot right. of times when we are in that reaction mode we are doing the urgent not the important and if you keep doing urgent for too long uh, the important things all become urgent and then you've got this huge bucket of urgent and it becomes very confusing and overwhelming how to get out of it which right. frankly is where stress comes from right it's right. really this little circle that too many things like that happened we neglected the important, we thought we could get back to it, but we didn't. And now too many things got in the urgent category and now everything is urgent. Right. And so now we're just operating in that quadrant. So really what we're doing is we're taking that deep breath and going, hold on. The only way to get out of that is for you to manage your time right. and for you to look at your priorities and go, okay, I'm gonna do the important, versus the urgent and separating those things out. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, oh. and the other thing um, real quick, and then uh, I know we're getting close to the end of time. Um, you've got to set boundaries B because if, if people think they can pour, put more on you, they will keep putting more on you. And there comes a point where you have to, I guess that's where I go back to you. Sometimes you have to say no. You have to say, I can't do this. I can't do this anymore or I can't do this right now. The answer right now is no. Um, we might revisit this, but, 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 but what I find is if sometimes, you know, that old saying, when you give an inch, they try to take a mile is very real. Uh, and so, so you have to set those boundaries and that goes back to the margin for sure. But you have to set those boundaries because people will take advantage if you don't. Yeah, I agree. I like to put it in the positive, which is, I think it's kind of the same thing we were talking about earlier, but, and I very much agree that boundaries are critical. And I think sometimes leaders can get really uh, snarky and stingy and rigid with yeah. their boundaries. And then that's not quite the way we want to cross, come across as a leader. And certainly you don't want your followers to be talking to you like that either. Right. Well, I can't, sorry, deal with it. So to me, I like the sound where it's like, great, I'd really love to help with that. I'm doing X, Y, Z that you gave me yesterday. I hear that you really need X, Y, Z right away. Which one would you like me to do first? Which one would you like done today? And so you're kind of negotiating and co-designing right. so that, that you're prioritizing and they're prioritizing. Nobody needs to be a victim and go, okay. And then you're like, man, I guess I'm gonna have to stay till 10 o'clock tonight in order to get all this done, okay, let's not be a victim. That doesn't really actually help anything. Right. Rather just put it out there. I've got three hours left on finishing this presentation that you wanted done today. I'm really happy to do that. If you, this is more important, I'm happy to do that too. Um, which one would you like done today? Right, yeah, I was, I was, uh, that was gonna come back to that. L let Give them the opportunity to say, um, which one is the, the highest priority? Yeah. Absolutely. So. It's a good point. In order to get out of that urgent mode, it is about prioritizing and it is about putting those um, to-do lists together, looking how much time it takes to do it and planning well. And I do always like to say, uh, it, it, we set ourselves up for failure when we completely book our entire day. Yeah. I believe you kind of schedule 80% of your day and leave 20% of your day for flex. So, you know, easy math, if you're working a 10 hour day, eight hours are planned. Here's what I'm doing in these times. Two hours has some margin for the unexpected, for right. that conversation that needs to happen. So not that you should be working a 10 hour day. That was just me and math. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, in the quick wrap up. So really, uh, we know that people are stressed right now. I work with some amazing, fantastic, 
incredibly highly skilled leaders and it is just something that's going on. We're not talking about this because David's had stress, I've had stress, and we have had stress. We It is the season right. that naturally is a bit of a pinch and there's additional forces going on that just create extra stress right now. It's yeah. not a big deal. Nobody's bad. Nobody's wrong. Right. It just is what it is. So how leaders do we want to respond to that? And leaders, as you think about how do you take care of yourself? How do you recharge? How do you have compassion on other people? How do you give them that grace, that margin? Don't, you know, don't send the email on the weekend that they have to say no to. Just don't send that email right. on the weekend. Um, or uh, and then last, how do you recalibrate? And so that you can be operating important and urgent, but moving forward without burning yourself out. Um, if leaders go ahead and post in the comments, your yep. ideas, your thoughts, I'm sure other people have things that really work for them. And we want to hear from you what you're doing that helps you to stay in that important quadrant so that you're leading well. Absolutely. We'd love to hear those comments. So, um, all righty. Uh, well, that's about our time today. Um, it's good to be back and uh, I hope uh, you all have a great, uh, a great week. Sounds good. All right. We will see you next week. See you next week. Another episode. All right. Take care. All right. Bye. Bye.